So I just want to thank you guys for really being cool with this series. You guys have been really supportive of all my Centurions, and it's been absolutely awesome. So I really hope you keep liking the series, you keep supporting it, and let's see how far we can get with the Central Powers. Who knows? Maybe we can actually end up winning World War One, despite the fact that the odds are completely against us. Uh, it's definitely possible. So... Last turn, we went ahead and started making the movements for all of our armies, and I do believe that we are going to go on one brilliant offensive. Of course, this guy actually have, has a 30% penalty, so I'm actually going to go ahead and take out uh, one of the army corps. I'll see if this improves anything. Oh yeah, that improves something. So let's go ahead and actually see if uh, Josiah von Harrigan can go ahead and attack. I don't think he can. He's definitely in a defensive stance, uh, but nonetheless, I am going to move him into... Uh, Epinal over here, and we've actually been moving a lot of our forces. As you can see, this general over here managed to break through the French lines at Verdun, and we could certainly continue attacking with him, although he needs time to recover. And I actually want to take a look here and see if we can build any depots. I don't think we can right now, um, and there might actually be a depot here. Somebody mentioned that I could actually look and find a, find a depot here, but usually if you can't build one, that means that, uh, you know, you just can't build a depot here. Either it's already there or some structures are in the way. Um, so we won't worry about that right now. We will take this general, however, and we're going to bring him to assist this guy. I just don't feel lucky enough, so I'm actually going to move into the Argonne Forest uh, with this particular general. We're also moving with this general over here, but nobody's really attacking. Everybody's on a defensive stance, so it's really going to be left up to the enemy to attack us. Um, if they don't attack us, we're in a bit of a pickle, to be honest with you. What an odd choice of words. A pickle, right? And we also have a big problem with this general right here. Um, obviously, Max Fuhrer von Hausen has been awesome. The problem is, if you guys take a look over here, his men have no morale at all. Um, we need to stop. We need to just wait here and just recover at this point. Uh, because he's just not battle ready. Um, and we could build a depot here in Brussels. So I'm going to do that. And I'm going to take a look here. We're still breaking through Belgium. But I'd actually rather break through this part in the center um, and get into France as soon as possible. I don't want to have any issues. So let's try to go straight to Tournai. 34 days, that seems all right. And uh, I guess we're already on an offensive stance. We've also got some generals here. Uh, I didn't even notice these. These must be one of the generals we unlocked. Um, and we can certainly go ahead and start dealing with the Belgians here. I want to see if we can put him in attack mode. Yes, we can. So we'll have him destroy any remaining Belgians. And of course, we have the great uh, George von der Marwitz. I'm going to pretend like I know who that is. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and take him and move over here to Dinan. Uh, I'll actually try to move him by rail because I do want to get this guy there rather quickly. So let's do that. And we've still got a lot of issues regarding uh, like the Eastern Front. People have actually been commenting on not just the Eastern Front, but also the, uh, the Serbian Front. Sort of our central front, I guess you could call it. Uh, and that's definitely a, a cause for alarm. So we want to take a look over there and kind of see what we can do to improve things. We actually see all of these little lines you guys are spotting are actually our army moving in that direction. And it looks like we've already ordered a lot of our armies to start attacking Belgrade. I'm hoping that by attacking this city, we can take over and stop this annoying war with the Serbs because it's really not benefiting us at all. Um, if we can end this war, we can basically use these troops, send them up to Russia, uh, and really cause a lot of damage to the Russians. So let's do that. Let's take a look over here. It looks like in Budapest we've uh, unlocked the, one of the generals. And I might want to go ahead and move him up to reinforce one of these armies. He'll be up here. But overall, I like what these guys are doing. And as you can see, we're still cutting through the enemy territory over here. Although I would like him to be in attack mode. We might not be able to get into an assault posture. And don't forget, we're also sending the Kaiser's Gold uh, to Turkey to try to get the Turks to join us officially once and for all. And in fact, I'm going to jump over here really quickly. I think I still have some diplomatic points. I might not. Uh, but if I do, yeah, we're already sending a diplomat to the Ottoman Empire. I'd like to send a diplomat to the Italians, but I don't really believe that they're going to join our side, uh, to be honest with you. Italy. Can we send Diplomat? We're going to find out. Okay. So we can send a di Diplomat to Italy. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that. It looks like actually we already have a Diplomat there. No, no, no. That's the Western Entente. Wow, we can't. So they, they've actually sent a Diplomat first. Uh, I guess we'll send a Diplomat to Romania. I don't expect them to join us. But that would be cool if they did. Uh, and of course, we could send one to Portugal too. Well, I wouldn't expect Portugal to join us. Um, who should we send it to? The Dutch? Uh, I guess. What if the Dutch join us? That would be a really weird situation. Um, and of course, the Zeppelin raid. Unfortunately, we can't use that. Reconnaissance? Nope. State funds? 
you know, I would like to print some state funds. Um, unfortunately, we don't have that option right now. And we're not going to change our government. That's just crazy. The Kaiser is in control. Um, and this is to quell unrest, munitions factories. And, of course, we could use this Max Hoffman uh, to basically make the Russians, you know, any Russian in German territory is going to take serious, serious negative effects. But I don't really don't we can use it right now. It's not that big of a deal. Um, we've already unlocked quite a few new generals, so I'm not going to mess with that either. What I am going to do is now that we've beaten the Russians back here at Konigsberg, there's no reason why Paul von Hindenburg can't go ahead and start crushing the Russians in this territory. So we're actually going to look over here and see where the closest victory point is, and it's either at Bielistok or, Ka or Kovno. Um, so I'm actually going to try to go to Kovno over here, 29 days, I like that, um, and see if we can take over this area. Uh, and we'll also grab this army right here. This must be one of the generals we've unlocked. I'm going to go ahead and merge these two. And that actually works out really well. Uh, and let's go ahead. Decent attack power too. And we'll send this guy to the Alistok. Uh It's going to take him 38 days, so a little longer. But maybe if we take the train, nah, it's not really going to cut much time. Nonetheless, pretty cool stuff going on here. And, of course, this guy, I'm just going to keep him right here. Uh, Kurt von der Born. And we will end the turn, guys, and see what happens. Uh, there's really not much we could do. We've basically sent out all of our troops... Uh, we do have some generals here, obviously, but they're moving into this position. And we'll send some of our infantry to move with them as well, because why not? Might as well also send one of these infantry units, the Grenzer Brigade, to try and join up with our main army here. And send these planes over, too. But getting into uh, this, this area has been absolutely ridiculous. The Serbs are crazy. Um, I just don't know how we're going to be able to beat the Serbs, but eventually we will. Um, okay, let's take a look here. Boom, boom, boom. Well... We've accepted this. Let's go ahead and see how it works out for us. Uh, and this particular guy's just going to have to hang back. Same with this guy um, at the Sombre. I'll actually try to move him back to Brussels. Uh, if I can get him by rail, I will, because uh, I don't want the enemy hitting us. All right, here we go, guys. We're plunging into the future. Alright, it looks like the British might actually manage to cut us off at Charleroi and the French. They've got two massive armies there, and uh, I'm not liking what I'm seeing. Hopefully we can go ahead and resupply that army using those depots. They badly need resupply, uh, but they've gotten some amazing victories nonetheless. Come on, men, move forward! Look at all those beautiful iron crosses all over the place. I want to get to Rem. I know I probably fucked that up. Rem, is that correct? Lille is easy to say. All right, here we go. And it looks like the French are not taking the bait in those territories. We are in their land, uh, but we're in a defensive status. And so far, they have not attacked us. So we'll see what happens. Also, the British are now over there in that uh, Antwerp forest area. That's that's very dangerous. Oh dear, men. We must contend with a German defeat. And actually, Karl von Bula had so many more men here than the enemy, uh, Edouard de Castelnau. But, for, you know, he actually managed to defeat us, probably because we either lacked uh, morale or because we have the stack is too big, one or the other. And 241,000, the stack is probably too big. Um, we'll go ahead and get out of here. See what else happens. Okay, now this is an assault uh, by the enemy. Don't forget, this is the guy that we moved behind enemy lines, trying to get behind the French. And a German victory, an amazing German victory here, guys. Look at that. 55,000 dead French. Um, and that's really, really good. It's going to look good for us. This is Ferdinand Falk. And that's, of course, Ferdinand Falk is an amazing general. Um, and just all of these regiment of line, uh, our men were able to hold them off. A uh, medium hit probability, exhausted. So they did get exhausted, but uh, the commanding officers were doing very well. Obviously, Karl Ludwig von Delsa and this general. And now we're actually taking French territory en masse. And that's, that's a good feeling. Of course, not having very much luck in Belgium. We're actually having more luck on the Ardennes front than we are in Belgium. So, it's troubling. And Brussels has been taken back! No! Revolt. We're going to have to get back in there into Brussels and uh, quell that revolt. I thought we put down these peasants a long time ago. The rape of Belgium was supposed to deal with that, but I guess not. All right, we're getting very close to Lille. That is good. So, we can take Lille. We are well into France, guys. Let's 
So uh, don't forget, guys, to put your thoughts down below as to what you think should be done next. I always love to hear that and hear your feedback uh, to see if we can continue this campaign as long as possible, of course. Wow, this is a really long turn, guys. Sorry about that, but here we go. An attack into Serbia and a victory by the Austrians. We finally managed to break through the Serbian lines, killing 6,264, but Stepa Stepanovic is an amazing commander, and he's just going to pull back and probably use those uh, units later. These are really interesting-looking units. I cannot pronounce that. I'm not going to try. Um, but we also had some Panzerwagen here, um, armored cars, which really must have helped in this battle, I can only imagine. Um, but we did lose almost all of those Panzer wagons. So look at how good these Serbs are without those. There's no way we would have broken through. Uh, and we also have planes, but these Serbs are excellent defenders. I can only hope that we can keep moving through their country with ease. Right, one of our generals has switched to attack mode um, in Demoiselle, right near Morange. If you guys take a look. There we go. That's what I'm talking about, baby. Attack! Charge the trenches! No, I'm a Frenchman, no. German victory, guys, another one. Beautiful. And once again, this is true World War II status stuff. Look at that casualty count. I mean, that's ridiculous. Um, we almost, we also took a lot of prisoners here. Um, but the enemy lost, lost 53,000, we lost 50,000, although we have a lot more men here. Um, but you could just see, just imagine the amount of men that are wounded, killed in this battle. An utter trench warfare battle where everybody's charging, and all of these friendly commanders assisted us um, in Von Bülow, Von Björn, uh, in basically breaking through. It's really cool. Unfortunately, they don't have any images for these two generals, but those are the generals we, we obviously drafted into the army. Uh, they don't need images. Really cool stuff there. So we're going to go ahead and see if that assault continues. But so far, the offensive against the French is working out really well. 666, six, six, it's the devil. It's the devil, guys, at Luxembourg. It's 666. Six, six. And apparently Luxembourg has regained independence. That's uh, strange. I thought we took them over. Uh, well, we'll have to figure that out and uh, deal with it as soon as possible. All right, the French are going to try to push us back to Brie. Um, or to Metz, more specifically. Uh, we'll, we'll see if that happens. They might just leave us there and let us sort of starve, our, starve ourselves out, which is what I think they would do. That's what I would do anyway. But uh, if we can get to Barl Duke and basically cut off their railway, they're going to have a lot of trouble. So far, we're already giving them a lot of problems here. I'm worried because the Russian bear has been really quiet this turn, and uh, that leads me to believe they're, they're basically massing for something huge. Here we go. Oh no! Oh, that's not gonna. That's not gonna be good. A German defeat led by Paul von Hindenburg, lo losing forty-seven thousand Germans. Uh, the Russians also lost forty-seven thousand. But as you can see there, Leonid Artemonov has uh, quite a few more men, and they actually took a lot of German prisoners. They won't be returning home, unfortunately. Uh, just an amazing battle all along the fronts here. But the Russians have a lot here. They just have a tremendous amount of men fighting for them. Um, and uh, I really want the Russian Revolution to just happen right now so we don't have to worry about this. But uh, unfortunately, right now, yeah, it's going to be tough. So that attack was a total failure. We're still moving into Serbia here. And another victory. There we go, guys, at the Battle of the Belgrade Fort. So we have taken Belgrade. Um, that's under our control now, and that's a major victory for us. We're also moving into Lille, and I hope we can take that too. I don't know what this unit's doing in Longwy behind us. Unless they're just trying to cut us off, because that's just a single infantry unit. Oh, the planes! The scouting planes! And this is, of course, our move from Colmar. Oh, oh my goodness, that's not going to go well. Or is it? An incredible German victory again, led by Von Bülow. Um, you can see right here that um, the French were using the Aeronautique Militaire, 
um, which is uh, of course their basically their entire air force here, one of their one of their major air force squadrons, um, and that definitely didn't feel good. Um, I want to take a look over here. We actually destroyed 32 planes um, using our 29, so I'm sure the Red Baron ruled the skies in this battle. 32 planes going down. That in itself is worth the fight. We were also actually fighting um, some uh, some British troops as well, not just Frenchmen apparently. Um, Albert the First, King Albert. Albert, what are you doing here? Well, in any case, um, he's he's going to be a problem. But I know I'm going to have to repeat that. They've disposed of most of their troops onto the French mainland, which is going to make it a lot harder for us to take these positions. I'm going to switch over to who owns the regions over here so we can kind of see our progress. And as you can see, through the Ardennes, we've made a major push. Um, we're now in Sedan. Uh, and in a lot of different areas over here. We've also pushed through Verdun. And if we can keep pushing through, I'm thinking with three armies this way. In fact, we need to get this guy to go ahead and join up with this guy. Um, but, you know, three armies pushing in this way, we might be able to get to Paris. I mean, it's possible. It really is. I'm mostly worried about our Belgian front because it's just not doing very well. And the only thing we can do about that is to maybe try to build some depots, uh, try to wait for these men to reinforce themselves, and really not do too much with them right now. As you can see, um, Brussels is actually under our control, thankfully. I had a minor panic attack there, but it's actually doing fine because uh, I was under the impression it wasn't, but that's only because the victory point button shows who originally owned the region. Uh, apparently, when you're... It's not showing that now, but it apparently shows it when you switch turns. Um, so interesting anyway. But I want you guys to let me know what you're thinking so far. How is this going? Uh, I think we're doing pretty damn well, all things considered. We've taken Saint-Miel. We were moving into all of these French territories. Um, and now we just have to kind of wait and see what happens. Um, so far, it doesn't look like the Ottomans have joined us. I don't think so anyway. I could take a quick look. It would be really cool to unlock the Ottomans right now. But, uh, yeah, I don't think they've joined us yet. We're going to have to give them some more reasons to join us. You know, this is a big push, obviously. But we are definitely now in Serbia. We've taken Belgrade. We've gotten across uh, that terrifying river there. Uh, that's really one thing that's just a natural border. Uh, the Drina River. Just a natural barrier uh, between Austria-Hungary and Serbia. But we managed to cross through. And now, they're in some serious trouble. But, like I said, they're incredible defenders. I expect it's going to be a pretty tough fight either way. But once this army takes the Serbs out, we can move them up to deal with the Russians. And I really hope that these Romanians do what's best for them and join us. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Take care. Have a great day. And hail the Kaiser!